Good morning and welcome. You can be seated. Welcome to the Honors Medal Ceremony. My name is Dr. Carolyn Matthews. I'm a professor of information systems and the director of the Honors Program. I'm also a Marist alum, and I look forward to welcoming the class of 2023 into our alumni network. As I look out across the audience today, I find myself feeling exceptionally grateful, grateful that we can be here together to celebrate the achievements of our Honors seniors. I'm grateful so many families and friends could be here to join us on campus, along with those watching via live stream, as well as President Kevin Weinman, our Provost Dr. Catherine Kodat, deans, other members of our cabinet, and members of uh, the Honors Council and the faculty. I'm also grateful that this amazing group of seniors chose to participate in the Honors Program. The Honors Program is an academic and social enrichment community comprised of dedicated students seeking to further challenge themselves during their college years by participating in more rigorous and diverse coursework, as well as multiple faculty student research experiences. I want to take a few minutes to reflect on the honors experience that they have gone through the past four years. Students started their journey by completing honors first year seminar and writing for college in their first year at Marist. That probably seems like a long time ago now if you think about it. Followed by honor seminars during their sophomore and junior years, focusing on special topics in literature, history, fine arts, social sciences, ethics, and more. These seminars enabled our students to collaborate in our community campus garden alongside the professor, attend operas, plays, and art galleries in New York City, travel to Gettysburg for an immersive historical experience, and some students participated in an honors course where their classes were held on a boat going up and down the Hudson River. This is just a sampling of the many interactive and transformative learning experiences honor students have participated in. During their junior and senior year, honor students collaborated one-on-one -on -one with faculty mentors on research projects, culminating in the, their senior thesis project. You all did an amazing job presenting at the senior thesis exhibit over the past year. A lot of you just culminating and presenting those projects a couple weeks ago. Our honor students are a motivated and highly productive group. Many have had multiple majors and minors, have studied abroad, are student athletes, participated in a wide variety of clubs and activities across campus, were resident assistants in the dorms, worked jobs both on and off campus, participated in internships. Many have per participated in research experiences that led them to present their work at conferences domestically and internationally. And one of our graduating seniors is the class of 20 2023 valedictorian. Marist Honor students are bright, energetic, passionate individuals who enrich our campus community in so many ways. I've had the privilege of teaching all of the students in this room uh, at different points in their time at Marist. Some enrolled in college courses with me, some completed research projects with me or traveled to conferences with me to present their research, and all of the students in this room took their honors senior seminar with me. This introspective course provides a culminating experience for honor students where they reflect on the journey of their life's events, their education at Marist, their participation in honors, and examining their upcoming transition into the world beyond college. In this course, students spent a lot of time evaluating and thoughtfully discussing an array of topics, such as values and motivation, their community, self-awareness. We talked about mentors who have impacted their lives, the importance of diversity and empathy, leadership, gratitude, how we understand the construct of happiness, and how we internalize the concept of, meaning, of living a meaningful life filled with passion and purpose. It's been rewarding for me to watch all of you reflect deeply on yourselves and your goals and your purpose in life. I'm very excited to watch these students launch into the world beyond Marist, and I'm grateful to have been a part of their educational experience. If you've ever looked closely at the words written on the scroll at the bottom of the Marist coat of arms, you may have noticed it's inscribed with the Latin words cum optimis litigare, which means to strive with the best. The past few years have presented new challenges that we have all strived to overcome, and our amazing students has prevailed as scholars, leaders, and global citizens. 
I am impressed by the dedication they have all demonstrated as leaders in their discipline and representatives of Marist in the Honors Program. So I thought we would start with a, a couple of awards. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes to talk a little bit more in depth about the Senior Thesis Project, during which time students worked independently on a research project with the guidance of a faculty mentor. Students presented their research at the thesis exhibit, which is a highlight at the end of every semester as we showcase the broad range of potential within the honors program. I am proud of the research projects completed this year, as well as the diligence students demonstrated in developing and presenting their work. I'd like to thank the Marist faculty who served as mentors guiding our honors students through this experience and who all submitted nominations for outstanding thesis work. The Honors Council, you can see seated behind me, comprised of faculty across our academic schools, vetted many nominations by faculty mentors for distinguished thesis awards. The Honors Council examined three key areas, of, three key areas when selecting award recipients. Student success, promoting innovation, and advancing the social good. On behalf of the Honors Council, I am pleased to announce the, th the three recipients of the Distinguished Honors Thesis Award. And this is a surprise to them, so they're all wondering, is it me? When I call your name, please come up to accept a certificate that rec recognizes your outstanding work on the Honors Thesis Project. So I'll start with the award for student success. The award for student success goes to a student from the School of Science whose faculty mentor was Dr. Daria Hansen, with a research project titled, The Impact of Exercise on the Mental Health of Adolescents. Congratulations, Juliana Lindquist. Okay, lots of applause, this is the fun part. The award for innovation goes to a student from the Schools of Social and Behavioral Sciences and the School of Liberal Arts, this is a double major, whose faculty mentor was Dr. Kevin Gogler with a research project titled, Assessing Viability of Voice User Interfaces in Second Language Learning and Repetitive Conversational Tasks. You know who you are. Congratulations, Mia Garofalo. The award for social good goes to a student from the School of Communication in the Arts, whose faculty mentor was Professor Du Chung, with a research project titled, Evolving the Fashion Supply Chain, Analyzing the Intersection of Regener Regenerative Agriculture and Fashion. Congratulations, Abigail Bedard. There were many exceptional projects this year, as anyone who attended either of the two thesis exhibits would know. Um, the students really did a phenomenal job presenting their work and designing posters and coming to talk about it. Uh, so on behalf of the Honors Council, congratulations to all of the students uh, for producing a diverse range of outstanding thesis projects. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, a few more awards. Uh, I'd like to recognize some students who have gone above and beyond as engaged members of the honors community, serving as my senior advisory board. These students who are representatives of each of our academic schools have served as student advisors to the honors program, 
volunteering to meet with current and prospective students, helping with admissions and honors events, and being available to me as a sounding board for honors-related ideas and questions when I needed feedback from the student perspective. I'd like to ask these six students to please rise and make their way to the front to accept a certificate that recognizes their service to the honors program this past year. I'll call you up individually to receive your certificates. You, you should know who you are. Uh, Nash, John, Megan, Chris, Obi, and Mia, can you come up to the front? Uh, for the schools of communication in the arts and the school of liberal arts, this is a double major, Nash Mendlinger. From the school of computer science and mathematics, Giovanni Amico. From the School of Liberal Arts, Megan Griffin. From the School of Management, Christopher Mobeck. From the schools of science and the school of social and behavioral sciences, another double major, uh, Obidinma Agboku. You didn't get to sit down very long, Mia, sorry. Uh, and from the schools of social and behavioral sciences and the school of liberal arts, another double major, Mia Garofalo. I would now like to welcome Honors Council Member Dr. Emma Frederick, Assistant Professor of Psychology and Co-Chair of the Diversity Council, who will introduce our keynote speaker. Dr. Edward Antonio is Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at Marist College. He joined Marist in September of 2022. Edward has held many academic and administrative positions. He was an associate professor of religion and social theory at Ileaf School of Theology in Denver, Colorado, where he also served as diversity officer, associate dean of diversities, chief Title IX coordinator, and the director of the Master of Arts in Social Justice. In addition, he was the director of the Justice and Peace Program and coordinator of the famous Identity, Power, and Difference curriculum at Ileaf. Edward Antonio was a member of the core faculty of the Conflict Resolution Institute in the Corbell School of International Studies at the University of Denver. Before joining Marist, he served as Chief Diversity Officer and Professor of Humanities at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. Edward is the editor of Inter in uh, Enculturation and Postcolonial Discourse in African Theology and co-editor of the Cambridge Companion to Black Theology with Dwight Hopkins, of the University of Chicago. Edward Antonio has also published numerous essays on topics such as race and racism, the environment, sexuality, the body, and many other issues. He is currently writing his autobiography. A former journalist, Edward Antonio is originally from Zimbabwe. He received a BA from the National Council of the Academic Awards in London, a BD from Luther Rice Seminary, an MLIT degree from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland, and a PhD from Cambridge University in England. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Edward Antonio as the keynote speaker for the honors program. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very good, very good. 
congratulations uh, to those who are graduating. Um, I uh, am very pleased uh, to participate uh, in this event to honor you and uh, to celebrate your great um, achievement. I, uh, you know, when Dr. Matthews asked me uh, to do this keynote, uh, I went into a panic um, because uh, it became very clear to me after she described the honors program um, that you are all a very distinguished uh, class. It is an honor for me uh, uh, to talk with you, to speak with you uh, this morning. I just wanted to share just a few, uh, uh, a few things. Dr. Matthews mentioned two of the things I want to talk about. Number one, the fact that you are stepping into a different world, a world beyond uh, uh, Marist. I want to talk about that world briefly. She also mentioned that all of you have at one point or another studied something to do with diversity uh, and empathy. And I want to connect those two things, the world that you are about to enter and diversity and empathy. There is a world beyond Marist. It is a world that is waiting for you, a world that needs you. Now, what does that world look like? It is a world full of spectacular technological innovations. It is a world in which there are amazing discoveries in medicine and chemistry. It is a world in which there is plenty of human good in terms of philanthropy. But it is also a world in which there is poverty and hunger and suffering. A world in which there is racism and social inequality. It is a world in which there is war and polarization. It is a complex world, in other words. That is the world that you are going to go into beyond Marist. That world is waiting for you because it needs you. It needs you not in some perfunctory way. It needs you as a grad from Marist. It needs you because you have come to Marist and you have received this amazing education which has helped you develop the intellect, the character, and to acquire the skills to go into the world and make a difference. It is a world that is awaiting your skill. And there's a particular dimension of this world that I want to describe uh, for you and invite you to engage with as you graduate from Marist. It is the world of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Very important. Consider the following. Every Fortune 100 company has a verified diversity policy. Consider the fact that every Fortune 500 company has a verified diversity policy. After the, George, the death of George Floyd, after the murder of George Floyd, the corporate world committed $340 billion to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And before George Floyd died, the corporate world spent upwards of $8 billion on diversity, equity, and inclusion. 75% of Fortune 500 companies have a C-suite position for someone in the area of, of diversity. That's how important diversity, equity, and inclusion is. You know, we all know that the corporate world does not put money where it doesn't need to. So those sums of money already tell us an important story. As you step into the world, there will be diversity looking at you in the face. You will encounter it at the gym, you will encounter it at church, you will encounter it at the grocery store, it will be on the streets, it will be everywhere you go. 
you will likely supervise people who don't look like you or be supervised by people who don't look like you, people who speak with an accent like myself. That is part of the world into which you are going. And that world needs your skill. It needs you to bring five things to it, to bring your whole self, to bring your difference, and in order to imagine that it's someone else who is different, someone else who is diverse, bring yourself, bring yourself awareness. It's a world that expects you to bring your intellect, the ability to think critically and to engage people from a variety of perspectives. It is a world in which you will be required to displace, and that's point number three, tremendous humility, because it's a world in which you will discover that however good you are, there's someone who's better than you. It's a world in which because of your education at Marist, you will be invited to be the center of inclusion, the magnet that brings people together. Remember those ideals that Marist espouses and that you've been educated into, community, service, and excellence. The community portion of this is really important. And finally, it is a world that is awaiting you to do the best you can to enjoy it, to make a contribution, and to improve the world. Again, congratulations. Well done. I am very happy. Um, that you are now arriving in this important world. Thank you, Dr. Antonio. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our Honors Council members. The Honors Council represents faculty from each of our academic schools who help support and strengthen the program and students in it. Each member of the Honors Council, please rise as I introduce you. From the School of Communication and the Arts, Dr. Zachary Arth. From the School of Liberal Arts, Dr. Brian Lowe. From the School of Management, Dr. Delalee Sue. From the School of Science, Dr. Zion Kloss. From the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, Dr. Emma Frederick. Each of them will come up in turn to read the names of students in their school. I ask that you please hold your applause until after the students' names for each school have been read. We will start with Dr. Zachary Arth, who will read the names of the students in the School of Communication and the Arts. Dr. Arth is also going to read the names of students in my school, Computer Science and Mathematics, as I give out the medals. Thank you. From the School of Communication and the Arts, Gregory Bodwin, Games and Emerging Media and French. <laughs> Abigail Bedard, Fashion Design. <laughs> Daniela Bonafetti, Media Studies and Production. <laughs> uh, 
Madison Bremen, Fashion Merchandising. Isabella Ann Cicinelli, Communication and History. Serena Catanio, Fine Arts and Psychology. Mary Christine Drummond, Fashion Merchandising. Nicholas Fisher, Games and Emerging Media. Catherine Marie Gambeski, Fashion Merchandising and Fine Arts. Jamie Goodman, Fine Arts and Communication. Gabriela Guerrero, Media Studies and Production. James Haug, Communication. Samuel Higuera, Communication. Jessica Marie Jabe, Communication and History. Jonathan Kinane, Communication. Nash Menlinger, Media Studies and Production and Spanish. Lindsay Ann Machetta, Fashion Design. Zachary Musso, Communication. Isabel Alice Perez, Fashion Design. Christopher J. Peterson, Communication. Meg Peeper, Fashion Merchandising. Congratulations to the students in the School of Communication and the Arts. <laughs> All right. I also get the pleasure of being Carolyn Matthews. I will now read the names of the students in the School of Computer Science and Mathematics. Giovanni Anthony Amico, Computer Science. Shannon Brady, Computer Science. Samuel Clemente, Information Technology and Systems. William Holt, Data Science and Analytics. Mitchell Matsiauskas, Applied Mathematics and Economics. Courtney L. McQuaid, Applied Mathematics and Accounting.
John Michelle, Computer Science. Mason Nakamura, Applied Mathematics and Data Science and Analytics. Casey Ostick, Software Development. Jack Spagna, Data Science and Analytics. Michael Ernst Volchko, Computer Science. And Michael Wise, Data Science and Analytics and Applied Mathematics. Congratulations to these students in the School of Computer Science and Mathematics. And now, Dr. Brian Lowe will read the names for the School of Liberal Arts. In the School of Liberal Arts, Jonathan Arke, English. Adrian Paul Dupriel, Philosophy and Economics. Celine Diaz, Spanish. Rachel Dillon, Political Science. Megan Elizabeth Griffin, Political Science. Jared Joseph Jackson, Political Science. Christina Marie Podwin, Political Science. Connor Paust, History. Rietta Steffen, English. Congratulations to the students in the School of Arts. And now Dr. Della Lee Su will read the names for the School of Management. Paige Barrett, Business Administration. Anne Bacchese. Business Administration. Alexis Colucci, Accounting. Jake DeLuca, Accounting. Brittany Elman, Business Administration. Thank you. 
Abby Haas, Business Administration. Jack Hakula, Accounting. Emma Lohr, Business Administration. Vincent Manna, Business Administration. Dylan McDermott, Business Administration. Christopher Mobeck, Business Administration. Thomas Muller, Business Administration. Victoria Rafsky, Business Administration. Francis Riviezo, Business Administration. <laughs> Catherine Roy, Business Administration. <laughs> Lauren Schleith, Business Administration. Lauren Spence, Business Administration. Connor Sweeney, Business Administration. Brian Willman, Business Administration. Congratulations to the students in School of Management. And now Dr. De Zion Kloss will read the names for the School of Science. Eliana Ossoff, Biomedical Sciences. Abigail Saplinski, Biology. Daniel Kazop, Biochemistry. Obi Dinma Egboku, Biology and Psychology. Catherine Gallagher, Biomedical Sciences. <clears throat> Catherine Gill, Biomedical Sciences. Ariana Keludos, Biology. Jaden Kennedy, Chemistry. Woo! 
Madison Langwell, Biology and Communication. Juliana Lindquist, Biomedical Sciences. Samantha Grace Lyons, Biomedical Sciences. Madison N Nicole McCarthy, Biomedical Sciences. Maura McGuire, Environmental Science and Policy. Aglaya Morlock, Medical Technology. Aiden Peck, Biomedical Sciences. Elizabeth Plowman, Biology. Alyssa Sayedge, Biomedical Sciences. Ryan Sarian, Biomedical Sciences. Alana Mary Trees, Biomedical Sciences. Tyler Zane Ante Giovanni Wenzel, Biology. Congratulations. Will the students in the School of Science please stand and let us take a moment to give them a round of applause. And now Dr. Emma Frederick will read the names for the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Christopher Ryan Breen, Psychology. <laughs> Juliana Buckman, Psychology. Bridget Carroll, Psychology, Childhood Education. Jennifer Epstein, Criminal Justice. Emma Fulham, Psychology. Mia Garofalo, Psychology in Spanish. Olivia Geraldine Pepping Hanso, Criminal Justice. Taylor Kuntz, Psychology and Philosophy. Stephanie Molito, Psychology. Lindsay Norton, Psychology. Woo! 
Eliana Rodriguez, Criminal Justice. And Allison Tierney, Psychology, Childhood Education. And congratulations to the students of the schools of social and behavioral sciences. And I will now pass the podium back to Dr. Matthews. Let me give the students just a second to finish getting seated. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> Let's pull this back up a little. Um, I, I'd like to uh, encourage the students to take a minute to absorb this very special moment, um, talking right to the students for a minute. You've worked really, really hard to get to this point in your life to be sitting in these seats at this moment. Um, this weekend is all about you and celebrating you and your many achievements. Um, we also want to celebrate family and friends and your extended network who have supported you and encouraged you and helped you get to this point. So with that being said, I'd like to invite all of our honor seniors to please stand up one more time to be recognized and celebrated for completing the honors program. Just imagine what tomorrow is going to be like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As we celebrate our honors seniors, I'd like to mention that the honors program would not be possible without tremendous institutional support. I'd like to take a minute to thank the many members of the Marist faculty who have engaged with our honors students, including teaching a wide variety of dynamic honors seminars, organizing and taking students on field trips, mentoring student research projects, and helping students prepare and submit their research to conferences. I'd like to specifically thank the faculty who serve on the Honors Council for their support, ideas, feedback, time, and consistent energy. The faculty at Marist go above and beyond every day to create and support a strong academic experience for our students, and the Honors Program would not be what it is without their dedication. So thank you to the faculty. I'd also like to thank everyone from Academic Affairs for their continued support, specifically Dr. James Snyder and Diane LaRusso, who's over there and is really my, my rock and my support uh, for the Honors Program, so thank you, Diane. The Honors Program, oh, yes, thank you. The Honors Program at Marist thrives as a robust academic enrichment community with the support of a lot of people. So please join me in a round of applause for everyone who contributes to this really exceptional program. <clears throat> as we conclude, I want to make a few final remarks to the students here today. Each of you exemplify the values that we strive to foster in the honors program, and we're proud of all you have accomplished in the last four years. You have shown resilience and perseverance in the face of tremendous adversity. I'd like to highlight what Randy Posh, whom we all got to know a little better through our last lecture in senior seminar this year, taught us about perseverance. Brick walls are there for a reason, but they're not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to show us how badly we really want something. I know this quote resonated with many of you during our senior seminar because almost all of you wrote about it in your journals. Without a doubt, you have all demonstrated your ability to break through barriers and succeed under challenging circumstances. 
I can't wait to see all the walls that you're going to scale in the next phase of your journey when you join me and many others in this room as Marist alumni. Please remember to accept a helping hand when it's offered to you, and don't forget to lend one as well. Congratulations to the class of 2023. That concludes our event for today. I just have a couple uh, remarks for us leaving. We're gonna have a formal recession. So I'd like to ask for the students to please wait for the Honors Council to leave the stage and you can follow behind us in row order. And the students can meet their families and guests outside of the building. And I'd like to ask our guests around here to remain seated until the recessional has ended and every student has exited and you can meet them outside where it is sunny and warm. Thank you very much for coming today.